This is Purdue's first basket of the game from last year's historic upset by Fairleigh Dickinson. Zach Eady sets a ball screen with Braden Smith snaking it for a pull-up jumper. You have now watched every point Smith scored off of ball screens during that game. In other words, he went the next 38 minutes scoreless in ball screens, while also having a career high seven turnovers. The reason I point that out is because this season, Smith has been one of the best ball screen guards in the country. In fact, the sophomore averages the third most points per game off of ball screens of any high major player. Yes, the Purdue offense still revolves around Edie, but Smith's improvement has given them a great second option this season, and it also helps open things up for Edie. When the defense chooses to play drop coverage against the Boilermakers, Smith loves to make them pay by pulling up for mid-range jumpers. He's shooting 44% on pull-up twos and 43% on pull-up threes this season. The nationwide averages on those shots are just 38% and 30% respectively. ED also makes drop coverage a challenge. Notice how Steven Crowell is in the drop here, but he's worried about getting back to ED, basically just conceding a layup to Smith. Same thing here with Coleman Hawkins. He's boxing out ED as Smith lays the ball in. On this one, Jackson Kohler is more up at the level of the screen, but the result is the same. He has his back turned, locked in on Edie as Smith gets an easy one yet again. So those are examples of why it's hard to play drop coverage against Purdue. But what about more aggressive coverages? Northwestern blitzes with Edie's man here, leaving the big fella unattended underneath the hoop, which just isn't going to work against Zach Edie. On this one, Northwestern hedges and the helper is six foot two Boo Booey. So because of the size mismatch, the best he can do is foul. Purdue is very good at re-screening. Here the blitz contains Smith initially, but then Edie turns right back around and re-screens, allowing Smith to get to the elbow and now putting the defense in a compromising position. This time it's Trey Kaufman Wren screening. Again, Northwestern is aggressive on the first one, but Smith gets to his spot on the second screen. The biggest statistical difference between this season and last season is three-point shooting. The Boilermakers shot 32% from three during the 2023 season, ranking them 276th in the country. This season, they're second in the country at 41%. And Smith has mastered these cross-court skip passes to his three-point shooters. You're starting to see why Purdue is so hard to guard. You have a center that commands more attention than anyone in the country, a point guard that consistently makes the right read, and and they're surrounded by high level floor spacers. My personal favorite pass that Smith makes is when he pretends like he's driving to the basket for a finger roll layup, only to then throw the lob backwards to Edie at the last second. So those are some of the basics of how Purdue plays out of ball screens. In the rest of the video, we'll look at how they also play through Edie in the post. I also charted every single one of Edie's made baskets this season, so I'll have the data on that. But first, I've been filling out March Madness brackets since I was eight. I'd watch games, read articles, and then obsess over my picks. 2004 must have been a particularly obsessive year for me. I made four brackets. And I still remember in 2003 that nine-year-old me would have won my dad's office pool if Hakeem Warwick didn't famously block this shot. I picked Kansas to win it all that year. Then, sometime in high school, I learned about bracket strategy. Basically, the idea that it doesn't just matter what teams you pick, it also matters what teams everyone else in your pool picks. It's about finding value. I learned about bracket strategy from Pool Genius, the sponsor of this video. Pool Genius has a bracket picks product that uses a machine learning algorithm to generate the optimal bracket. All you do is enter in your pool's information, like the size of the pool, the prize payouts, and the scoring system, and then their algorithm spits out the optimal bracket, or brackets with an S if you plan on entering more than one specifically for you. Since 2017, Pool Genius subscribers have reported over $2.1 million in bracket pool prizes. And every year, an average of 51% of their subscribers have reported winning at least one bracket pool. 
That track record led to Wired Magazine doing a feature on their algorithm. I highly recommend their product for anyone looking to get as big of an edge as possible this March. Just go to poolgenius.com slash hoopvision or click the link in the description to get a 40% discount on all of their picks and tools for March Madness. That's a special deal they've extended to Hoopvision viewers that's not available on the site. All right, now let's get back to Purdue. Over two years ago, I made a video about Zach Eady before he was the household name that he is now. I counted the number of dribbles he had taken before every made basket and found that he averaged just 0.25 dribbles per shot, with a ridiculous 78% of his baskets coming off of zero dribbles. So I replicated that study for this season, charting his 253 made field goals during the regular season. This time, I found he's averaging 0.37 dribbles per shot with 70% of his baskets coming off of zero dribbles. So while he's putting the ball on the floor a bit more than his sophomore season, he still largely dominates the game without dribbling. If you're curious, this is the play with the most dribbles he's taken all season. Five before hitting a hook shot against Wisconsin. I should point out that part of the reason his dribble numbers are so low is the defense doesn't let him bounce it. They usually send a double team long before he can get to his third or fourth dribble even if he wanted to. Edie is a willing passer against the double team. He's by no means Nikola Jokic passing out of the post, but he has improved in that area throughout his career. There's been another big change for Purdue this season and it involves the geometry of the court. Last year, 52% of Edie's post-ups came on the left block, 18% came on the right block, and 30% came in the middle of the floor. This season, the Boilermakers have emphasized posting Edie up in the middle of the floor. 44% have come from there, while his left block usage has decreased by 14%. The coaching terminology for posting up a player in the middle of the floor is called high-low action. One player goes high to the top of the key, while the other player goes low posting up in the middle of the paint. Here you can see Mason Gillis is high and obviously Edie is low. The hard part about guarding high-low action is that there's no weak side of the floor. It's difficult for either Wisconsin defender to help or double team without allowing an easy pass to their man. Compare that to when Edie is posting up on the left block here. Now there's a weak side, so the lowest Rutgers defender is in charge of giving help. If Smith tries to skip the ball to the weak side, the theory is the longer pass will give the defense more time to recover. Now let's go back to the previous play. Gillis enters the ball into Edie, who takes one dribble and gets to his favorite, the right-hand hook shot. The downside to high-low action is that the player posting up can only be in the paint for so long without getting a three-second violation. So so Matt Painter designs his offense to quickly look for Edie on the high-low, then if not, reverse the ball and allow Edie to clear the paint. It's all about playing angles, and Edie's a master at it. Watch here how it looks like Purdue is trying to feed the post to the left block. Owen Freeman is fronting Edie, and there's not really an angle for Smith until he passes the ball to Kaufman Wren. Now Edie holds his duck in and pivots, causing Freeman to get stuck behind him. Before you know it, Edie's catching the ball with a foot in the restricted area, and there's no way to recover. On this play, it's the opposite. Carson Cooper sees Lance Jones running up to the top of the key, and he's probably expecting high-low action, but instead, Fletcher Lawyer has the angle, Cooper's facing the wrong way, so the ball goes right inside. Here Cooper is guarding a ball screen and then has to go back to Edie in the post. Again, notice how he's facing the wrong way. Purdue has their angle and the rest is history. These examples of opponents facing the wrong way against Edie are more common than you'd think. It's because Edie knows where the ball is going and where the angle is going to be created, but his defender is just trying to guess. It's especially hard for a big man to execute his ball screen coverage and then run all the way back down to the paint and battle Edie on the inside. That's why Painter will roll Edie right into post-ups to establish deep position. 
Here Edie again rolls into the post, and this is an example of why it's so hard to give help on high-low action. Parker Fox is in front of Edie, so Dawson Garcia tries to help on the backside. Gillis sees that his man is helping and then just lifts up for an open three. On this high-low, Minnesota tries to help with the defender guarding the player at the top of the key. That doesn't work because Gillis is way too good of a shooter to leave open like that. And then this time, no one gives help on Edie rolling to the basket, so he just buries his man in the restricted area. It's pick your poison when you're guarding Purdue. One thing opponents emphasize against Purdue is pressuring the passer. See how as soon as Lawyer catches the ball, the entire Michigan State bench has their hands up signaling to pressure the ball to try to make the pass into Edie more difficult. But it's hard to pressure the ball and then also dig down on the post. Trey Galloway is just too far away to have an impact on the play when Edie makes his move. Just like we saw Purdue using the re-screen earlier, the Boilermakers also use the re-post. Edie will pass the ball out, wait for his defender to just slightly rest, and then re-post again to get even better position the second time. One of my favorite set plays Matt Painter uses is to take advantage of teams that double team the post. It starts with Lawyer running to the left wing and entering the ball into Edie. As that's happening, Gillis sets a back screen for Cam Heidi leading to the dunk. Here it is again with Gillis this time receiving the screen for the layup. And on this play, Purdue uses it to set up screen the screener action with Gillis coming off of the pin down for a three. So those are some of the reasons why Purdue is different this year. Much better three-point shooting, more ball screens for Smith, and more high-low action for Edie. And I just went the whole video without even mentioning the Boilermaker's elite offensive rebounding, which you're seeing now, or the addition of transfer guard Lance Jones. Look, I get it. Until the Boilermakers break through to a Final Four, their March success is going to be questioned. But make no mistake about it, this team is really good. Time will tell how far they can go in the big dance. Thank you very much for watching. A reminder that the link to Pool Genius is in the description. If you're looking for more advice on filling out your bracket, I uploaded a video on bracket strategy two years ago that might be helpful. I want to extend an invitation to join the official Hoop Vision bracket pool for this year. I set it up through ESPN, it's free to join, and I'm giving away Hoop Vision gear to the winners. First place gets this exclusive Hoop Vision hoodie that I'm wearing right now. And second through fifth place receive a dry fit Hoop Vision t-shirt. The link to sign up is in the description, and thank you as always for watching. Well, we tried to double him and then he kicked it out and then they made a three. And then we didn't try to double him and he made a bucket. So it was kind of a tough, kind of tough.